Welcome back to Trading 360. I'm Nicole Petalides. Time for the big three. Three stocks, three charts, three trades. Ben Lichtenstein will take us through the charts. Here to take us through the trades, Charles Moon, Prosper Trading Academy. Great to see you both. Thank you for being here. So, Charles, yesterday we saw the S&P and NASDAQ once again closing at highs. So any gains today, which we're not seeing right now. I see the S&P's down three. But any gains today would be another record close. Do you foresee a lot of records that are happening in this back half of 2024? Yeah, you know, it's it's just the market behavior in itself. We have just continued to lift. It's as if we're pricing in multiple rate cuts, hey, which it looks like that's going to be the case here. Uh, you know, we may have uh, tempered our expectations from three, but now it seems the market is expecting two. There isn't much to slow down this market. It's certainly a risk on environment, especially within tech, especially within the semiconductors. Who are doing all the heavy lifting but you know when we see the other heavyweights such as apple microsoft and meta start catching a bid you know netflix has been on such a strong run as well we haven't really seen amazon and google participate yet there's a lot more upside that could happen if these stocks start breaking out and blowing the top off so this is really setting up you know we had a little bit of a rollback especially in the semiconductors yesterday a lot of those stocks went risk off uh, a little bit larger than they've normally been trading, but you know they look like they look like to be uh, bouncing right back, and it certainly seems that buyers are continuing to scoop in on any dip. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about Salesforce. This is the name you're watching closely. Uh, what are you thinking here? Yeah, you know they got pretty much destroyed off earnings. It was quite a disappointing report, but they've rebounded back nicely. And realistically, this is a name that, you know, at least from the lows, has shown a lot of strength in the very near term. Uh, I really think that this upside progression is going to continue and it's going to try and at least test the 200 day moving average right around this 256 price. And that's really the key core, uh, you know, determining factor on whether it could rise up back to the 270, uh, right around the 274 range to fill that gap, the, the closing price prior to earnings. You know, this is a name that's, you know, obviously implementing AI into the, into the enterprise services. And again, the numbers just weren't as strong as the streets had expected. But if they correct their measures and, you know, strengthen out their margins, I really love the comeback idea in this name. Right. OK, so you see the potential for the upside and, and for the market overall. You said if these things start to break out, you know, we'll see more upside potential. Um, let's get Ben's thought on the charts there for Salesforce. Yeah, I like the bullish call here, Nicole, and uh, I can see um, a bullish pattern playing out here. So it sort of feeds into what Charles was just talking about. I wanted to dive into a couple different time frames. First and foremost, a five minute candle chart, because we are starting to see a bit of strength here after uh, uh, the word, uh, what uh, Charles described as destroyed, right, after uh, earnings. And they are trying to rebuild, he said. Taking a look here just again at some of the price activity we've seen uh, this week after uh, the end of last week, we kind of set a bit of a consolidation pattern playing out here around 232 and then rallied up. Uh, recovering again nicely into the end of the week, as Charles pointed to, up to 242 is that kind of area where we're starting to consolidate around right now, 240, 250. But let's take a step back here, move away from the five-minute candle chart, because this actually shows a little bit of weakness here. So again, on the more intermediate, uh, uh, this stock still kind of under pressure here. So taking a look here, you can also see, as Charles pointed to, the sell-off in reaction to earnings. They did get destroyed, and they are, again, rebuilding nicely, as he pointed to. So coming off that recent low, but a bit of a bearish pattern. If you're taking a look here, again, at this uh, uh, hourly candle chart here and just looking here at a more intermediate time frame. So we've identified a bullish pattern on the five as we're trying to recover, but still holding below some key areas of resistance. I've got my eye on this 275, 280 area. That's a big level. You also want to see some strength up and through 250 here. Again, as Charles mentioned, that gap lower that we saw in reaction to earnings, we still have really yet to retrace. So 
trying to recover a bit on the five, but still lagging a bit in terms of a real follow through on a more intermediate. Let me tell you why I'm giving the benefit of the doubt to the Bulls on this one here, because again, uh, a pattern I've been keeping a very close eye on. We just bounced off a key area of support. We've gone from a five minute to an hourly now to a weekly candle chart. We're adding quite a bit of time on, but you're going to see a similar pattern as that five minute, right? Balance. High conviction, balance. So currently around the 220 level. But, Nicole, I've been trying to point this out quite a bit. We see this a lot within this range that plays out here. A test of this area that holds, and that's the instance we saw in reaction to earnings. So they did come in and scoop this one up around 220. And we could see some good strength here right now. Energy to the upside targets 318 on the bigger picture. And when you see this, you know, you think, first of all, that big gap down on the earnings, to your point, we'll have the stockholders meeting on June 27th, so you can watch for that. But it's just such a dog right now, right, for the Dow, and that's one of the reasons when you see the S&P and NASDAQ taking off, and this one's down 7% year to date. I'm sure uh, shareholders are not happy. I mean, three months down 20%. Charles, final quick thought here. Yeah, and you know what? What makes this attractive for me is that there's just so many times that traders, investors are willing to buy a peak value. You know, obviously the darlings of the market like Nvidia and TSM, uh, AMAT and Micron. You know, there's just so much that you can do at these peak levels. You know, when we start seeing strength, it brings a lot of attraction. And you know, for me with CRM, once it starts clearing this 245, 247 threshold, and they start, you know, trying to test that 200 day moving average, once it gets above, it could bring in a lot of different interest from traders, uh, short term traders, and both investors alike looking for that recovery. And certainly, you know, leading into that shareholder meeting, that that certainly could be a catalyst for the stock to recover. You know, this is where I'm looking for some value in the market in an extremely bullish environment with the possibility of participation, especially if the Dow starts to recover, CRM is going to get a little bit of a propellant to the upside here in the near term. Yeah, yeah. I know you're also watching Workday, similar chart to, you know, sort of really move down on the earnings. I still see an overweight rating, though the price target um, was lowered. Overweight at Wells Fargo, the new price target is 275 from 325, which gives it upside potential from 218. Some of your thoughts on Workday, Charles? Yeah, so, you know, there's a uh, a key reversal pattern, where, which I call the W pattern. And that's really just kind of a reversal of trend idea. And that really was facilitated today when it broke above this 217 level. It also cleared the 20 SMA. And the laws of attraction here is more the fact that there's unobstructed upside from a technical standpoint. The gap bar high, the 50-day moving average is all around 238. And considering the stock is right around 218, you know, that provides a nice little profit pocket for this stock to move. You know, the fact that the stock has been on the lows but hasn't been breaking, usually the school of thought is when the stop stops making new lows, and it's either going to go sideways or it's going to go up. And so it's been going sideways for the last month, and now we're starting to see that uplift. This is where the laws of attraction on my end in terms of value comes into the picture. Certainly, the stock is being down for a reason, but, you know, there's nothing to say that it can't recover in a bullish environment. And when it has un unobstructed technical resistance, you know, it, it really leads to an opportunity where if it gains momentum, it can recover very quickly in a short period of time. Yeah. So that's really what I'm and looking look, for just, here. I'm yeah. looking for it to you know, just hold strong and then go long. <laughs> yeah, understood. Look, June 20th, it had a nice move that was notable. Um, let's get to Ben on the charts, please. Yeah, Nicole, you were right. A very similar pattern, right? When we look at that longer term chart, and I'd agree with Charles as well, in terms of this is a stock that's been beaten down, but could have some a big upside potential here if we could start to recover at this point. We haven't really shown signs of that yet. Just wanted to start again with a more intraday time frame, we'll work our way up into that bigger picture look as we did uh, with CRM and almost an identical weekly chart here. But let's start off again with a, uh, a hourly chart here. So you can see high conviction and then you get a uh, consolidation area that's formed. Charles mentioned we've also been in a bit of a range for about a month here now. Not a lot of conviction one way or the other, but a bearish pattern nonetheless. You can see 
Again, a uh, uh, balance that's forming around 210. Now, step back. I think you could get a little bit more uh, granular with this one. Pull up the fine tooth comb and kind of identify a couple areas where the market pause briefly and establish value on the way down to this 210 level. But you can also see, again, no rejection off. Starting to inch our way up, testing the upper extreme range that we've been in, but still only testing the upper extreme of a range here. Again, a bearish pattern playing out also on this uh, hourly chart as well. As we take a look, let's just identify again, adding a little bit of time on, but similar pattern here, right? This is the move we just looked at here, again, since uh, uh, the end of May, beginning of June. And you can see now in this instance, we've gone all the way back to uh, beginning of March. Take a look. 290, 270, 250, 210, all the way down. Value has been and continues to be establishing itself lower. So we've got a pretty well defined trend here. But in similar fashion, as we talked about with uh, 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 Salesforce, you can see again on that long term on this weekly candle chart, and my eye was immediately drawn to this area right here because again, when you're balancing, when you test the middle of this range and get that lift off, look, we saw that. If you remember, what was that back in, uh, back in the uh, uh, beginning of 2023, middle of 2023, a new high post. We've come back off. This is going to be carry to watch here. Again, finding support, it looks like right now, around that 220 level. Further strength here opens up a door for a retest of 311. All right. Thank you for all of that, uh, Ben. And then we want to move to your last name that is going to be your final trade today, Charles, as uh, tech is one of the sectors that is down today overall. And in fact, Apple week to date's down about three quarters of one percent, but did hit some recent highs of 220 and change. Some thoughts of where this is headed and why. Yeah, so, you know, there's two schools of thoughts here. Obviously, Apple had pretty tremendous gains in a short period of time. Uh, they really don't normally behave the way that they have when they had those two explosive days where they basically broke out from around 192 all the way to 220. And so we're seeing a little bit of profit taking taking place. Ultimately, I'm looking for a little bit of a hold sideways and then a bit of a breakout pattern, something simple as an inside bar setup where we just have a day consolidating within the previous day's range. But if the weakness does persist, I'm gonna be eagerly looking at this $200 price these are old resistance levels that could act as support. You know, I really love the news that came out from Apple from their big event. And more importantly, the market certainly respect, respectfully has shown that they have also loved Apple the way that it actually behaved. It traded like it was Nvidia. And, you know, certainly the momentum has kind of weaned off a bit, but I ultimately think that Apple's not only going to retest these recent highs at 220, but they're going to break and make a really strong run towards 250 by the end of summer. This has certainly got a catalyst for upside growth. The AI or Apple intelligence that they're starting to incorporate can obviously re-energize re a lot of their fan base, which has, you know, basically gone tired and really stagnant in relation to a lot of the newer technology that they have developed. So there's a lot of things that's being worked. They're trying to create a lower price version of the Vision uh, Vision Pro. But more importantly, I just feel like this is going to energize the idea of new phone sales incorporating this new AI or Apple intelligence technology. This is definitely a name that's not done yet, in my opinion. I think there's a lot more to go for Apple. Yeah, understood. Uh, ben, quick on the charts here. Let's check it yeah. out. Stock uh, still needs to prove itself on the short term, but long term bullish pattern. Let's begin first and foremost with a five minute candle chart. You can see behind me, Nicole, value is moving lower, right? So until we get up above 214, until we take out this area, the expectations that this staircase type pattern will continue. Again, we're currently uh, forming value around 210. Take a step back with me as we look at a more intermediate chart. You're going to see an hourly candle. This pullback could just be a longer term buy opportunity for those that are kind of keeping an eye on this more uh, uh, intermediate time frame. Again, as long as we hold above 206, you got a bullish pattern. So short term weakness, longer term or more intermediate to now longer term strength here. We've moved from a five to a one hour all the way to a daily, I'm sorry, a weekly candle chart. And you can see this stock uh, back, uh, it was around 20 $22, if you remember, in the spring and summer of 2016. Look where we are. Again, just breaking up above 200 recently to 220. You can see a uh, high conviction trade here. We're in a vertical phase to the upside. Basically, what the bear, uh, bulls are looking for right now is value to form at this upper level here to solidify the working assumption that we're trending higher here, Nicole.
Thank you both for the big three today. Ben Lichtenstein there on the charts and Charles Moon from Prosper Training Academy. Thank you.